the other group of patients that historically I used to saw, see placed in slings are the patients with scapular fractures. So it's the other... The Just to give you a reference, however, it is important for me to say that most scapular fractures are treated non-operatively. So of the, of the uh, number of scapula fractures which present to Regions Hospital, we're operating on exactly 12%. I've tracked all the numbers for many years now. So only 12% of scapula fractures I'm operating on, uh, but over 50% of the ones I operate on are referred in from other centers either around the country or the region. So that's how we've been able to generate very large numbers to study what was, you know, originally thought to be a relatively rare problem. So it's rare in most places. Most places should probably be treating three or four a year by experts. We're treating um, almost one a week now. And so that's why you see it on the, uh, on the board so often. And same question about timing. Is this a is this an orthopedic emergency? When would you like to see these patients if they're going to be seriously considered for clavicular reconstruction? Or I'm sorry, scapula. Scapular yeah. reconstruction. So uh, they're not an emergency. Uh, in fact, because um, scapula fractures tend to occur in high energy mechanisms. 15% are associated with traumatic brain injuries, 15% with cervical spine injury, um, 80 to 90% with uh, hemoneumothorax, uh, and many, many other m multiple uh, uh, you know, injuries to, so you would to the body. So you would treat those injuries or at least stabilize those problems first and then work with your service regarding the timing if it, some form of procedure for the scapula is necessary. That's exactly right. In fact, now speaking of orthopedic urgency, open fractures. Again, my classic training is if you have a soft tissue injury in reasonable proximity to a fracture, that's that's an open fracture and I need to be on the phone with you and get antibiotics started and we need to think about getting that person to the operating room very quickly if I mean if that's feasible now I'm seeing you and your colleagues sort of stratify open fractures maybe all open fractures aren't aren't the same maybe you could tell us a little bit more about some of the contemporary orthopedic thinking about these, uh, you know, these common and important injuries. We still regard every open fracture as an urgent condition and we want to be in the operating room by a modest 13 hours from the time of presentation. That's our red flag uh, 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 marker that we have in our trauma protocols. The other thing that's important, and you, you alluded to it in your question, is that antibiotics given as early as possible has a greater association with a successful outcome, meaning lower infection rate, than getting the patient to surgery earlier. So antibiotics in the emergency room setting is more important than getting a patient to the operating room within 24 hours, believe it or not. Sure. See? So yeah. one of the things that would be a rough rule of thumb for me if I see a multi-trauma patient and I'm very suspicious of an open fracture is I, I can probably get a feel for the severity of the problem um, by the degree of soft tissue damage that's associated with it and obviously regardless of what I think about the soft tissue trauma that's associated with the fracture I better get tetanus status confirmed and get antibiotics started. Yeah that, that's correct. And there is one thing though fractures that are more displaced and more comminuted or multi-fragmentary are associated with greater soft tissue damage regardless of the size of the skin lesion. So if I'm looking at an x-ray and I see segmental comminution of a diaphyseal tibia from a bumper injury, I may say, wow, there's massive degloving underneath the skin. It could be from the ankle to the knee. Muscles stripped off, devitalization of bone and soft tissues. But the, but the skin and uh, laceration might just be a centimeter. So you, you can't just um, conclude soft tissue injury from the size of the laceration.